Hello and welcome to this energy investment analysis lesson on cost escalation and inflation. So here are the learning objectives for today's lesson. And remember, you can follow along to this lesson and any others in this playlist by clicking the link below for the slideshow. So we're going to differentiate between inflation, cost escalation, and the time value of money and define some terms that are useful. We're going to calculate the effect of these two things. And once we define current and constant dollars, we're going to how to figure out how to differentiate between the two of them and calculate one given the other. We're going to talk about the real and nominal discount rate. And then finally, we're going to wrap it all up by calculating the present value of current dollars or constant dollars using the appropriate discount rate. So let's review this um, definition of inflation versus the time value of money. Remember, inflation is the change in the basket of goods prices. So inflation is usually positive. So what normally happens is that, in general, a full basket of goods that a consumer could purchase is more um, year after year after year. Or the dollars, the other way you can think about it, is the buying power of the dollar for a basket of goods is less. While the time value of money refers to the fact that if you put money in the bank or invest it in something else, you can earn interest on the money. So these are two very different things. But both um, have a sort of time frame um, you know, incorporated into them. So we're going to deal mostly with inflation today, in today's lesson. So... Now, there's one other caveat that we're going to take into account. Inflation is the increase in the cost of our basket of goods, and cost escalation is an increase in the cost of one particular good, not the basket. So, let me um, you know, give you an example of this. So, let's just look at inflation of 5%, and we're just going to have a year one basket and a year two basket. And the year one cost, we're going to have everything be $100. So electricity is $100, coal, motor gasoline, bananas, and corn. And then everything rises because the whole basket rises, so it's 5%. So everything goes up to $105. Now, let's pretend we do that same basket, but now, and this is, we're going to, in cost escalation, we're going to have something called cost escalation indices. And you'll see how that, that works. But in this case, we're going to have a cost escalation indice of 1.03 for bananas and 0.95 for corn. So, basically, nothing else rises because we're not we're not having inflation in this case. So, um, electricity, coal, matter, motor, gasoline stay the same, but bananas go up. So you multiply 100 by 1.03 to figure out the cost escalation, and corn goes down. You multiply 0.95 by 100. So, neither of these really takes into account what's happening in the real world. In the real world, we have inflation and cost escalation. So let's look at the example of inflation for 5% and the cost escalation indices of what we had before. So again, the electricity, coal, and motor gasoline, they're going to stay the same because we're going to say that we have, they have no, um, their cost escalation indice is 1, so there's no cost escalation. But for bananas and corn, they're going to change. And let me show you how I calculated the bananas column. So we take the 100, and then the 1 plus 5%, that is the inflation portion of this. And then we multiply by 1.03, and that's the cost escalation portion of this. So that's how we take into account both inflation and cost escalation. So now we're going to go a little bit more in depth with cost escalation, and we'll come back to um, incorporating inflation as well. So we're going to get our cost escalation numbers from the most recent price indices um, and the CA tables. And let me show you what those tables look like. You can click on this link to uh, get the 2015 um, price indices. But here's the projected fuel price indices for uh, 2013. But what does all this mean? So you can see all the different numbers here. These are the same things that we had the corn and bananas from. But let's do um, one more example. So a big note here is these are ease indices are excluding inflation. So if you if you need to include inflation, you need to calculate that separately. So let's take a look at this problem. So we're going to say that we buy, buy residential electricity 
for 10 cents per kilowatt hour now. And if we were in Alabama, which those tables are, are from, so you can see if we go back one slide, um, this region's Alabama, Arkansas, Delaware, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to say we're in Alabama. So these are the price indices. And we're going to see how much would it predicted, would electricity be predicted to cost in 2020. So we're going to use that price indice. So that's how you look up the price indices. And we use the 1.05 times the 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So that gives us 10.5 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's how we predict the future cost of electricity. Okay, so now let's switch gears a little bit to inflation. And we want to really figure out first when we would incorporate inflation in our calculations and when we would not. Um, and we really haven't really been including it up to this point, but we'll see if that's correct or not. So first we need to define some things and give an equation. So constant dollar basically is a good metric to compare dollars from one period to another. So a lot of times if you're reading a news story or something, they may have like everything in $2,005. So this is something where we get rid of the effects of inflation and um, we have something as just a, what would a constant $2,005 buy you. The current dollar is you can think about exactly what's coming out of your pocket at the time it's spent. And that's really important to think about. So basically constant dollar is you can compare apples to apples, um, and current dollar is exactly what's coming out of your wallet. Okay, so let's think about which one of these is our current dollars and which are constant dollars. So I would recommend pausing the video for a second and trying these yourself, and then I'll go over the answers. Okay, so hopefully you paused and um, you mulled over these. But let's think about this. The mortgage payment of $9,600 a year. So that is what's actually coming out of your pocket. When you sign a mortgage document, that means you know that that's going to come out of your pocket. So that is current dollars. The car payment of $2,400 a year. It's the same exact thing as a mortgage payment. And this would be the same thing for a solar lease or any other fixed payment amount where you know exactly what's going out of your pocket year in and year out. So the last one, this is a little bit weird, but gasoline costs $4 a gallon today, and in five years, you buy 20 gallons, which is would be worth $80 right now. So is that $80 constant or current? Think about it like this. In five years, you don't know what gasoline is going to cost, but you know that that $80 right now is what it would cost. So the $80 is a constant amount. This is the same thing for electricity, for water, for anything. So if we're trying to predict things in the future, and what we've been doing with some of our solar quotes and energy audits and light bulbs, we're always using constant dollars um, because we haven't, because what we put in our cash flow right now is not actually what's coming out of our pocket those years. It's what that would cost if I paid for it right now. So that's constant dollars. So think about that for a little bit. You might want to rewind and hear that one more time. So, now let's talk about performing a current dollar analysis. So there's, there's two ways to take into account inflation when we have current dollars. Method number one is to estimate future costs and savings in constant dollars. And again, that's what we've been doing with electricity and some of our solar um, quotes and whatnot. And discount with a real discount rate. Okay, So we'll talk about what that is in a second. And method number two is estimate future costs and savings in current dollars and discount with a nominal discount rate. So let's talk about what these two are, what these real and nominal discount rates are. So a real discount rate just excludes the rate of inflation. And you can think about it like this. If we're using constant dollars then and we're discounting with a real discount rate, that excludes the rate of inflation. The nominal discount rate includes the rate of inflation, and it can be calculated as follows. The nominal discount rate, or upper, uppercase D, is this equation where uppercase I is the inflation rate and lowercase D is the real discount rate. Okay, So this may seem like um, you know, totally ridiculous right now, but hopefully these examples will help illuminate what's going on here. So 
let's do method number one first. So if you get $500 and $2012 five years from now, what's the present value using method number one? And we're going to assume a 3% discount rate and a 2% rate of inflation. So this $500, you're, you're getting $500 of today's money in 2017. So that's not actually what's coming out of your, or what's going into your pocket in 2017. It's $500 equivalent of today's dollars. So this $500 is constant dollars. So that's the important part. If we use constant dollars, see up here, constant dollars, we can discount with a real discount rate. And I apologize, this 3% should be a 3% real discount rate. So what we have is that the present value equals $500 and we discount with the real discount rate. And that gives $431.30. Now let's try method number two. So method number two, the first thing we know is we need the nominal discount rate. So this is calculating the nominal discount rate using that formula. Second, we, can, we need to calculate the current dollar amount. So 500 of today's dollars is equal to 552 dollars five years from now using a 2% inflation rate. So basically, the, another way of saying this is that $500 now has the same purchasing power as $552 five years from now. Okay, so now we use that $552. This is the current dollars, so we need to we need to use this. We need to discount with the nominal discount rate. So that's what this is. So then we get 431.3, which is exactly what we got the slide before. So method number two, one and method number two give the same answer. You can use you'll see that there's some cases where method number one is obviously easier, some cases method number two is obviously easier. But you can always use either one. So let's look at another example. This is a, a, a typical mortgage where you have $9,600 per year payment starting in year zero. Um, you can see what is the present value with the inflation rate and the real discount rate of the mortgage payment in year. So I'm not going to go over this solution, but you can click here to open up um, a Google spreadsheet with how to calculate this. And you'll see method number one and method number two. And again, you'll see that method number one and method number two give the same answer. Okay, so let's look at these two. We had these questions in the beginning of class. So which of these would you pick and why? Would you pick $100 now or $110 a year from now? And also, same, same idea, would you pick a coupon for 500 gallons of free gas only valid in the year 2015, or a coupon for 500 gallons of free gas only valid in the year 2025? And we're going to say that 2015 is, is present day. So we assume all these things, 2% inflation rate and a real discount rate of 3%, and we assume a current gas price of $2 a gallon, and we're going to use the 2015 energy price indices. So let me um, open up the solutions here. So here's the solutions. Here are our assumptions up here. I calculated the nominal discount rate. Um, you can see that here. And then I looked up the price indices for 2025 from the 2015 price indices. So make sure you can get that same answer by looking at the price indices. And let's talk about this $100. The present value of $100 now is $100. The present value of $110 one year from now is, is the following. We take the $110, we multiply, and we divide by, we're discounting. We're going to discount with the nominal discount rate, because $110 is actually what's going in and out of my pocket a year from now. So that's current dollars, so we need to use the nominal discount rate. Okay, so this one's a little trickier. This one, uh, 500 gallons of gas in 2015, is going to be just be the $2 per gallon times the 500 gallons of gas. And then if we have 500 gallons in 2025, we can say that that $1,000 is the constant dollars, and we just multiply by the price indice. So we take the $1,000, which is B8, multiply by the price indice for gas, 
and that's constant dollars. So this B8 times A6 is constant dollars. So we discount with the real discount rate. And we asked in 10 years, so we use 10 as, as our, uh, as our um, exponential there. So that means I would rather take the 500 gallons of gas today instead of the 500 gallons of gas in 2025, according to these assumptions. Now, again, you could change these assumptions and see what happens. Over here, I would rather take the $110 a year from now rather than the $100 now. Because $110 a year from now is equal to $104.70 right now. Good. So the last thing that um, we're going to, I'm going to show you is this review sheet. So I would recommend um, keeping this near and dear to your heart and perhaps printing it out. It's a good quick reference. If you do print this out from the um, presentation, please remember just to print the one slide and don't print the whole presentation. So as usual, I'm going to include, um, to leave you with this light bulb example with cost escalation included, so you can see how I did it with the light bulbs. But we did not include inflation in this example because the same reason as the gasoline from the previous problem is that we, all, everything, all of our, electricity purchases are in constant dollars. So all we need to take into account is the cost escalation, not the inflation. And that, and we just need to make sure we, that we discount with the real discount rate. So this is nice that we don't need to worry about inflation for um, these very specific types of um, energy efficiency upgrades. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.